Welcome to the A Train Podcast. This is J Train Jared Free coming live from the West Village of Manhattan. That's right. Every Monday we take your emails, your stories, your questions. I love your emails. Let me just say thank you, thank you, thank you for sending your emails. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Anything you'd like. Life advice, relationship advice. I mean, we do a ton of relationship stuff, and it's always welcome and wanted and wonderful. And keep sending them in. J Train Podcast at gmail.com and keep telling your friends, make it your Instagram story, all that good stuff. Um, I'm on the road. People, if you're listening right now, I am going to be in Baltimore, Maryland, Magoobies, Timonium. I'm going to be in Richmond, Virginia, Boston, Massachusetts. We added a second show. Get those tickets now. We are like a month away as of tomorrow. We're taping this on a Tuesday. Month away, Wilbur Theater, fucking amazing. Second show added. So get the tickets. Assemble the group chat. Uh, come to Miami, Florida for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Carve the turkey with your dear old Uncle J Train. Richmond, Virginia in the uh, month of December. I, I mean... So many wonderful dates. It's going to be great. Or no, Virginia Beach, Virginia. I've never been there. So I'm kind of Virginia Beach in December. So yeah, let's go to the beach in December. That's uh, probably not that warm, but that's okay. Um, JaredFreed.com for tickets. JaredFreed.com for tickets. Uh, very excited. Today's guest, uh, new to the show, a recommendation. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I get people that come on the show and I know them, see them, awesome, great. Sometimes I have like trusted guests, you know, certain guests, they go, you should have this person on. And I go, eh, get the hell out of my apartment. No, no, no. <laughs> the, Anthony DeVito, Caitlin Cook, two OKPs of the show, brought, so this is on them. If it doesn't go well, <laughs> if this is a bad guest, you can message Anthony DeVito or Caitlin Cook. Hilarious comic. Gabe Malika, thank you for coming on. Oh, Jared, thank you for having me. Yes, please message Anthony just to say that you don't like him. That's fine. I'm sure he'll love to hear that. Here's why I trusted Anthony. <laughs> and uh, listen, I trust Anthony, um, but he just came back from Edinburgh. Yeah. Edinburgh, for those that don't know, and Caitlin was on the show a few weeks ago and kind of told the listenership of what it is. And it's a long Month long, right? Month long festival. You do an hour. You do your hour every day for a month. Your hour every day for a month, and people are doing an hour. You know, it's not stand up ish. It's there's a story to be told, right? For the most part, Soder went over and just did his hour because, mm-hmm. like, why would you do anything but that if you're Dan Soder? Right. Sean Patton would do an hour, right? But for the most part, it's like a structured Mike Birbiglia, Hassan Minhaj kind of thing. You're trying to. There's a through line. There's a tale. There's something that they're yeah. you're gonna walk away with and go. Oh my God! I never thought of the world in this way. That a touching tale, but fun. Yes. And some comics do it. Some storytellers do it. Some, you know, there's all types of spoken word people, right? Totally. Yeah. And they say it goes for a month. And when everyone comes back, they go, <laughs> "I am exhausted." Yeah. They come back as if <laughs> they. It's like they went to summer camp. There, and they have. The, the, you can see. They look like they've aged 17 years, and yeah. you have people you like, and you have people you don't like. That's why I trusted it, <laughs> because I know people go to Edinburgh, and they're like, I fucking hate that. They have true opinions on people in a way that I don't really have in passing with Gabe Malika yeah. on a Saturday night at whatever comedy club. You, you know, so... If he liked you after Edinburgh, I have to assume you guys became close friends and you're well liked. So oh, yeah. this is my this was my thought process with anyone and how a sit this is the thing. I love recommendations. People go, I get I get all these messages. Oh, Jared, you hate recommendations. No, I hate thoughtless mm. recommendations. I think that's actually a waste of my time. That actually is more about you than it is me. Well said. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where people, yeah, where you feel like you're being used for something because you have this platform and people love you. Right. Well, it's not even about this podcast. But if you tell me to go eat somewhere and you go, you got to go to Barf Burgers and you're going to barf after you eat these burgers. <laughs> no, that's because you want, you You don't care about my health. My, my, you, you want me to eat you want me to go, thanks for sending me to Barf Burgers. It's a oh, control I, I, thing. Right. Yeah, I get to control what Jared even does on his podcast. Sometimes right. it's, but with Anthony, would never do that. No. He's the sweetest. So we live together. So not only do we wow, like each other. so he liked you. 
Yeah, we got a we. Yeah. So most people go to Edinburgh and they they're out drinking every night. They're having a lot of fun. We would go. Me, Anthony, and Casey Balsham would mm-hmm. like do our shows. We might have dinner. We'd go out and then we would just go watch the Harry Potter movies. <laughs> yeah. And we were just like real basic. So you guys were like the adults. We were the so like I'm thirty camp. and they're forty. Right. And like I was like the young upstart. I'm like, oh, I'm an old man. <laughs> uh, it was perfect speed for me. So okay, so enough about Edinburgh. Yeah. What's your show? And so Gabe is doing a show off Broadway. What is the meaning of off Broadway? I like I like to ask questions that I would feel maybe would someone might feel uncomfortable asking. You're I perfect. probably sound like a stupid fucking idiot. No, no. But no, when no. I say off, when someone says off Broadway, it's a marketing technique of some sort. Yes. So what does it mean? So Broadway is like this limited number of theaters, mm. and it's very prestigious, and there's millions of dollars, and it's Hamilton, and it's Mike Birbiglia, and it's all that right. stuff. Right. Off Broadway, technically, is kind of anything that's not that in a theater in New York. But now some theaters like historically have been like, oh, we've been doing off Broadway shows for so long that it's now its own prestige thing. Right. So it's like I and I don't mean this in any negative way. Don't do. But it's like it, like if someone said I play triple A baseball, I would go, oh, they're fucking good at baseball. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like I would go they're right before the major. Sometimes they say that the real stars are in double A baseball. So they go, double A baseball is actually a more prestigious thing. <laughs> you know, if you know baseball, you understand these kind of differentiations. I would say in the theater world, when someone says I have an off-Broadway show, I go, they're right up. Broadway's coming? Is that what the... You know, Broadway is like a distant... Even Birbiglia, who's like huge and right. has been doing this for 25 years, even he, it took him four or five shows to get to like Broadway, Broadway. Mm-hmm. But for years, he would run him and Hasan Minaj and Jackie Novak and Kate Berlant, people that do this kind of thing would pick a little theater like this and get to do a run and it's how they get kind of discovered by the theater world. So this is so this is what I'm talking about. Like um and like when someone's like you know, I say this with stand up comedians, no one believes there's a middle class of comedian. Oh it's it's Seinfeld or starving in the street with the handout looking for money. Totally. They never think, oh well you'd be doing okay. Mm-hmm. Off Broadway, I would assume because I know this world of being a comedian. I go, oh, I would assume these are people doing it. Like Allison Livey just did a show, yes, that we push people to, and I went and saw it. Went on opening night. It was wonderful and amazing. It was about yeah. uh, her abortion, and, yeah. and it's it was at the uh, Cherry Lane. Cherry thing. Lane, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a, p- a lot of Alex Edelman did a run also, right. and he and was he at came the on the show too. Oh, great! Yeah. You sat right here. That's very that's you, nice. You're sitting in the seat that Alex <laughs> Edelman sat in. Holy <laughs> oh shit! Oh my god. Um, yeah, so he was Cherry Lane, but then he was also Soho Playhouse because yeah. he kept moving. So it's cool to do a show like it's the Soho Playhouse is where Fleabag was. It's where Nanette was. A special okay. no one has an opinion on. Right. Uh, it was great. It's exciting. See, this is ve- so you and they're making an investment in you. Yeah, they're co-producing it, so, so I'm not putting any so, money. Out. So you're in Soho Playhouse. Yeah. So that means this show is wonderful and great and highly touted. I people like I got some nice reviews. So you got good reviews in Edinburgh, which yeah. then kind of put then the Soho Playhouse people there. There's some woman in kinky sunglasses in the back, and she goes, "That's our guy." An eccentric billionaire, yes, right. That's exactly so, who okay. So there's an investment things. being made by real people with real money uh-huh. in the play world. Okay, yes, yes. So Gabe Malika is going to have his show, the Soho Playhouse, November second. It's two week run. How he does during this two weeks kind of influences what this could become. So, But yep. also, let me, and we're going to get into what the show is about, but, but even before we get into the, because I want to slow play this a little bit. So, you're the AAA of Broadway. The Binghamton Mets, <laughs> the Binghamton of, Mets of stand-up right. theater. Right, you're killing it. Okay, so no, you're an up-and-coming, this is a big show. Yeah. Um, if I'm sitting here listening to the J Train podcast, headphones in, and I live in New York, what a cool thing to go do than to go see a show that is, like, I want to go now. Like, I, that is on the up and up that mm-hmm. people have put and invested money into and that they have believed in to be, because people don't put money into things to lose money. Mm-hmm. They're yeah. putting in it because they believe that this could be a financial hit. Follow the money, people. So now what is the show about? <laughs> the show is called Solo, and it's pitched as a show about friendship. And it's basically the show about how I turned 30 years old and mm. I have all these bro friends who mm. I love. We watch Adam Sandler movies. We throw stuff at each other's balls. Love it. We order Taco Bell. We're idiots. Yes. And then... The Throwing sp- things at each other's <laughs> balls is a huge part of the male friendship thing. Yeah, Women, you know this about your boyfriends. <laughs> Uh, so like these are my guys and it doesn't bother me that we talk, we don't talk about anything serious. It's fine. 
And then my mom got sick. She's fine. But they just like didn't know how to react. Mm. And so the show starts from that moment of being like, oh, do I need to make new friends? Like I'm 30 years old. Like how do I meet new dudes? Right. And so it started with that as like the through line. And then it becomes, and then I go back in time and tell you, I used to have a best friend. And I kind of tell like this 40 minute story of my college best friend and what happened to us and how we're no longer friends anymore and what that looks like. Really? Uh, yeah. So it's like 20 minutes of like friendship jokes. And then before you know it, you don't even really know what's happening. There's like this 40 minute story starts. And is this friend out there? He's out there. Yeah, he Does exists. he know you're talking about him for 40 minutes off Broadway? I think he does. Yeah. <laughs> and was there, I, I don't want to give away anything without yeah. giving away anything. Is there a falling out? Is, is, There's I'm a assuming... love triangle situation. Got it. Kind of perfect for this, for the J train. Right. Things I'm sure we've seen in emails before. Wow. And you're giving one side of the story. I'm giving one side of the story that I like to think is a pretty generous reading of it. And it eventually it comes back to being like, so I don't have friends, but I have these idiot people in my life. Right. And that's kind of like the through line of it. Yeah, this is interesting. So I love this. So the, and I, I mean, especially the audience listening to this podcast. Please. This is a smart audience that is, I'm sure everyone listening to this has dealt with the idea of how do you make an adult friend? Yeah, yeah. How I'm in this new city because what I've noticed about the people that listen to this podcast or the people that genuinely like the things that I do mm. is that they are, they have moved to the big city, wherever that big city is. Because when I go to Albany, I don't have a lot of people at my shows. Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, my, and my explanation is, you know, and this isn't to besmirch the people of Albany because I like doing shows there. And, but a lot of them are either went to the big city and then got married and moved back to Albany. Mm. You know, young women graduating, you know, from a big state school generally want to go to the next Big state school, which is New York City, Atlanta, L.A., Boston. I'm doing a second show at the Wilbur. Like, there, like there's areas, but then you go to these other areas, and there are not as many people there because I understand who listens to this show. Mm. So if you're out there, I understand this is probably a very relatable thing. I'm going to a new city. I've got my friends from college, but I'm also doing my own thing, and I'm meeting people at work, and I'm an adult trying to make friends. Yeah, This is a wonderful version of that story i, I think assume. so yeah and it's and it's really about like i have these high school guys that i sometimes try to connect with mm. and the show is really about like do you have idiot people that you still hang out with from high school right. that you still see and like oh like it's we hang out it's like we're 15 again right and that has its pros and cons well also like um you know i have like a few different you know, group text. Mm, yeah. Like when I tell people to like come to the shows, I go assemble the group text. I love that. And that's a way of saying like, these are people you talk to every day, like yeah, or in yeah. some way or another. But you do have this thing where, and because I delve into the female world a lot, women especially will, when are we doing dinner? When's, when are we getting together? When, and you, if you go out on a week, week, a weeknight in New York City, you see tables of two women. And I'm not going to a lot of like, lesbian hotbeds yeah i know that yeah. those are friends catching up and yeah, yeah. women will get mad at their female friends you, you know i make dinner for you i've listened to your boy thing i've listened to your guy shit and then when i try to make it about me and that generally becomes a rift between female friendships i don't understand that rift because dudes we don't have that. we don't have that so I, I don't i don't feel i owe anyone anything yeah, and yeah. i don't feel that i am owed anything so yes. and, and that's the but there's Again, life is gravity. There's good and bad. There's mm. good and bad to, oh, I got to have dinner with Stacy this week. You know, mm -hmm. there's like, oh, I, I, they're an obligation, but they're also a closer friend because of that. Mm. Male friendship, there's no obligation, but although, but I probably know less about my male friends than I maybe should. Yeah, yeah. A central tenet of the show is my mom asks me about my best friend. She goes, Nick's sister just had a baby. How does he feel about being an uncle? Right. And I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> how he how feel he fe <laughs> Isn't that such a mom question? <laughs> I Men, I have... <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know. <laughs> no clue. Indigestion? I don't know. Yeah, it never came up. It never. We would never talk about that ever in a million years. And so I studied this. I found a professor who studies friendship. And uh -huh. he goes, male friendships are shoulder to shoulder. Mm. There's a game. You're playing golf. You're watching something on TV. You're just next to each other. Uh -huh. Female friendships, you're exactly what you said. Literally, you should teach the class. Right. It's women... W with a candle, having coffee or wine, or <coughs> sitting in a dark place. For women, the activity, typically, this is gendered, is each other. Mm -hmm. And for dudes, the activity is this other thing. And maybe sometimes something slips out. Wow. Yeah, isn't that it's wild? It's very interesting. And, and yeah. you know, a lot of that comes down to, like, this podcast and when people write in, like, you know, it does turn, you know, 
I'm not sitting. I'm not I fucking. I hate the, the the idea of a pronoun debate. Like I, I'm just like wh- whatever, you know. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but this does this podcast a lot of times gets into the male female thing because it's someone writing in about someone different than them trying to figure out what is this? How does this person operate? Yeah, and yeah. that's the hardest thing is like you're trying to figure this whole thing out while being as happy as possible but totally the 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 male friendship game it's and it's funny because like i'm like you know my dad i was thinking i was like you know now my parents are in a community in boca hell yeah they got there within 10 minutes they had all these friends all these people my dad all of a sudden whole new group yeah he didn't have one friend growing up like not one person i had an uncle you know a friend his friend that we called uncle but like he was like in and out yeah like it wasn't like um and then now he's at this community and like there was a point i remember we're walking down the street when he was like we got to cross the street and i was like what are you talking about he goes this person doesn't like me and i was like doesn't like you like i like you've never been I, I've never known you to have personal squabbles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, I, we just got, and, and he goes, I go, what happened? He goes, I play golf with the boyfriend and I made a comment and, and I'm like, I can't believe you are involved in this. Yeah, yeah. It he's, was more that than whatever the argument was. He's socializing again. He's in high school. Right. He's an old per. He's Morty Seinfeld <laughs> right. down no, in it's, Florida. There's nobody more Morty Seinfeld <laughs> than him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, listen, we want everyone to go watch the show. Go attend the show. November 2nd is playing for two weeks at the Soho Playhouse. What a cool thing. Like, I do think, I, I, I when I'm pushing people, mm. oh, i got to find, what else can we do that doesn't involve eating and drinking? Soho Playhouse, November 2nd, Gay Malika. It's called, what's the name of the show? We it's called even... Solo, a Solo. show about friendship. Yeah. Solo, a show about friendship. The link will be in the bio, all that good stuff. Uh, go follow Gabe at Gabe Malika on Instagram. Nailed it, nailed it. At Gabe Malika, go follow, support, and go to the show. Let's go, let's go, let's pack this thing out. I'm going to go. I'm down. Hell yeah. Nine November o'clock, 2nd. go have dinner, then come see me. Not, where's the Soho Playhouse? Uh, you, know, you get off at West 4th and you just walk down a little bit. Van Damme Street. I know where it is. Yeah. Oh, I can walk from here. Oh, yeah, dude. Holy shit. Okay, I got no excuse. Okay, ready for some emails? <laughs> oh, I'm ready. Jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. That friend, that friend at a bachelor party. Ooh, okay. Jtrain, love the pod. I'll get right into it. I'm getting married in September. Over the weekend, my fiance and I had our bachelor bachelorette parties. My fiance went down to Miami with his groomsmen, one of which is his best man who is married. My fiance told me that he took off his wedding ring when he got down there and when they were at the club, got a lap dance. Apparently, this club has a DJ with dancers who walk around, but not a typical strip club. I think this would be like 11. I think Miami has like oh, you these know. types of places. Not a strip club. It's a but hybrid. A, a, yeah, a hybrid, right. And okay. It, uh, uh, yeah my question how do i stop going crazy in my mind that my fiance may have acted in a similar way two do i just pretend i don't know and not tell his wife who i'm very good friends with we talk a few times a week but we only met because of my fiance thank you for all you do an anxious bride to be this is actually so on topic with your show yeah jealousy that it's thing. not yeah. even funny also the way they're interacting mm. he they're at an event shoulder to shoulder the yeah. strip club DJ place, okay? Yeah. Just what you just said. Yeah. The friend takes off the wedding ring, d- does his own thing. Mm-hmm. The guy there doesn't say a word, knows, obviously they're very close as couples. Mm-hmm. Doesn't say a thing, that's his thing, not my problem, not gonna make it about our friendship. Mm-hmm. It is funny that the woman hears the story, immediately thinks, well, why are you telling me this about him? And that's like, she's like, I'm going a little mad thinking maybe he copied his friend. But also, do I need to have a dinner (laughs) with his wife, a face-to-face conversation to discuss what's happened? I have this information. What do you think? Oh, so I have a lot of empathy for these people. They seem very nice. Um, I, I would say that that other people's relationships sometimes are like, Sometimes you got to like let that go. They have well, their own thing cooking, right? Like totally. don't you want to like take a step back sometimes and be like that's their relationship. He's having fun in the way that they they've agreed in some way or or that they've reasoned with in some way. Yeah, they justify it. That's a dude behavior. I'm right? sure he's going, "Ah, I just took off the ring cuz I don't even I I don't see a reason to take I 
listen, I know the guy that the type that does this. Yeah, and yeah. even especially when I'm single, I always go, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be married, guy. Mm -hmm. be, you know, it does, but I never say anything. Mm. I think the ring symbolizes a lot. Like my friend Nick takes off his ring, he plays with it, he puts it on his bed. And for him, like he takes it on and off. He doesn't, mm -mm. it doesn't symbolically, it doesn't mean a lot, but his wife is always on him. She's like, no, no, no. Mm. That's the, that's our marriage right there in this, in, in that symbol. Right. So you even playfully, I don't want you to take it off mm -hmm. in that way. So the idea of taking it off for a lap dance, I'm sure is very like triggering. <laughs> We're like, oh no, this right. me, like it's such a metaphor. He doesn't care about us while he's getting this lap dance. Right. Um, where it's like, that's such a, that's a detail that I think matters in terms of like the s symbolism of right it. and i don't think again i'm giving a lot of empathy to the to the guy to the future husband mm. the woman writing in about her fiance like i think he comes back and is like he's sharing the hot gossip with you yeah that's intimate right and he's going you're not gonna believe this fucking guy took it. and like i have done that before when i've been in relationships i bring home this story that I think is interesting but I don't care enough to do with but I want to share it with my partner yeah and then it turns into what are you trying to tell me via this story and I'm always surprised I am mm. always I've yeah. never been like and I go I should have seen this coming yeah. like I've yeah. never thought that like my story about the guy that I'm like friends with would ever show something about me but I guess I do understand where she's like well, were you you weren't even mad at it, so you must not think it's a problem. Oh yeah, that that that's now we're at the tip of the iceberg. So it's a uh, yeah, it's very revealing about their relationship. This is a, it's more of a conversation for them, like oh, when we get married or when we go on right. our bachelor parties, what what's the setup like? Are right. you going to behave like that? Because I don't like that. I think you're allowed to say to your partner, oh, your friend's behavior that's not really for us, right? Right. Well, then you go. I I, I would even say like, how does that? You kind of have to become like the pop therapist at that point. You got to like, yeah. how did that make you feel? Yeah. Like I think that instead of like, oh, you didn't get mad, did you? Mm. You didn't talk to your friend. I think the accusatory is the bad move. Mm -hmm. The right, like, if I was to be approached with that, I would go, well, I was a little uncomfortable with it. I didn't know that's how they operated. I didn't even know like he was on a ring off you know nightclub lap dance guy dude. lap yeah. dance dude yeah i'm yeah. surprised by it. it or he's not surprised mm. that's how the you know oh i know this other side of the relationship i don't think it's up to her to go to the the i don't know i i wouldn't go to the fiance the the, the other wife i don't think so either i think that's their their wedding weekend celebration boy girl thing it's also your more your fiance's responsibility than yours. Yeah. You were brought in to, in, and she says she talks to her, and I do understand where she's like, I feel uncomfortable talking. You've made my friend and I's relationship a little different. Mm. I do understand that, but I guess from my perspective, is like, that's my best man at my wedding. I would be more towards him than I would towards her. That That's my feeling. Totally. No, I, I think you're you're exactly right. I'm more interested in their relationship than the other couple's relationship. Right. And the minute you start getting into other, you don't want to be talking shit, but you want to go, what did that make you feel? How do you feel about a guy who takes off his ring? And, and if he, you might hear something you don't like to hear. Yeah. You might hear, well, I didn't think it was a big deal because we're, at a, we're in a land of fantasy and that's part of his fantasy that he was living out that night. Totally. That might create a new issue for you. You might go, wow, I am not attracted to this version of my fiance, which is scary to bring up, but that's yeah. getting to know each other. Absolutely. You, as a couple, talking about other couples and figuring out what works for you is like a very important element of this. Ooh, you this, learn. <laughs> this is like, I mean, this is, wh what's your relationship status? Seeing anyone? Do you? Uh, starting to see somebody. Okay. And it's going well. A couple dates. How'd you meet? Hinge. Hinge. And uh, it was a good first date. Dessert in Astoria. Because I don't drink. So okay. So no drinking first date. No drinking You say, first let's date. go to the dessert shop. What's the dessert? Uh, so... I, I like to give women options. So okay. I'll be like, hey, first date. I'm go because I know I give them no options. I say, you're going here. We go to the basement. This <laughs> I'm like, hey, you feel like, are you a dinner person? Are you a drinks? I won't drink, but I'm happy to buy you a drink. Mm. Or do you want to do dessert? Or do you want to do an afternoon tea? I like, like that. I don't drink, but I'm happy to buy you a drink. Yeah, I think that's. That, I think that's a, that, that, that make, because I went on a date once with a girl and she was like, oh, I guess I'll get coffee if you're going to drink. And I'm like, okay, I guess. Guess we're going to this coffee place. Like I felt yeah, bad. Yeah. I don't know. It took the, the, the that feels like a 
keeps the wind in the sails a little bit more totally. by going, I'll buy you a drink, but I don't drink. Just yeah, to let you know. I'll have a seltzer. Right. Or whatever. Do you put on your profile and don't drink? I do. It's in yeah. it's in the little box, so it's right. not explicit. No, that I think that's um, enough. And yeah, the options I think are good. I think I mean, we're comedians. We're in bars every night. Right. It's not like I'm like... Oh. What's the dessert place? I think some people would want to know. Oh, yeah. It's in Astoria. It's the Ammonia Cafe. It's open till like 2, 3 in the morning. And what'd you get? Cake? Tiramisu, baby. You got tiramisu? <laughs> <laughs> right? You got to keep it... Uh, keep it. I guess that is the sexiest of dessert. If I was it's like, I'll dessert. have a chocolate cake, it'd be like, I don't know. Br- a little, yeah. yeah. yeah I'll Matilda. have a tiramisu. Split it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Two forks. Two forks. Get Spoons in there. Spoons and forks. We went small spoons. I like that's even sexier. That's a better date. It's a, it is two forks, two animals. That's a married couple. Two yeah, <laughs> little spoons. That's intimate. Dainty, intimate. Well, I w- I walked here from Christopher Street. You live in a very horny part of New York City. This is, well, this is this part of the city. <laughs> it's Thursday night every night. Well, said. I've always I, and I do believe that it is very difficult in the West Village of Manhattan to walk to. A comedy club or walk anywhere you're going and not get a little jolt of like i should have a drink tonight you yeah. know like i should really yeah. are you off alcohol was it was it you were just like not a good drinker or is it just i don't like it in my life uh it was mostly i don't like it in my life i did for a long time mm. and college all that stuff and then i worked at a summer camp mm-hmm. and we would it was a summer camp for sick kids, Paul Newman camp. Okay. And we'd work all week. It was very emotional, great work, fun. And at the end of the week, we'd all get drunk. And it was really fun. It was a celebration. So I moved back to New York City and people were like, yeah, I'm out drinking. I'm getting loaded. And I'm like, but you didn't even help any sick kids. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we what didn't do way, uh, I know, I know. Well, Which I is, didn't go to the gym today. I know, I know. I'm an <laughs> asshole. But so I saw, and then I dated this British woman who mm. would drink too much and then yell at me. And I was like, ooh, actually, I hate this. I don't want to get yelled at in well, public. Well, you know, I I, I every month I have like a, an, a, 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 a like a like a self talk about drinking and how it works in my life and I'm mm. like there was a moment the other night where I was like I woke up another morning I woke oh Thursday night I'm like I should have a drink this feels right martini yeah. cold ice chips love it and then Sunday morning I'll wake up and I'm like nothing everything bad in my life is directly related to alcohol I'm like oh my god you yeah. know like how yeah, do you yeah. go back and forth. Oh, J Train Podcast at Juma.com, J Train Podcast at Juma.com here with Gabe Malika. He's got his show. One what one person show? Is that, yeah, is that one what we're per- calling? Yeah, it's what called you could say, solo, man. One, one man, man show. show. Yeah, solo. November second, Soho Playhouse. What a night in New York City. Talk about it like feeling the the jazz of New York City. It's cool. There's a bar downstairs I, oh, where beautiful. there's sometimes a comedy club every once in a while. And then upstairs is this cute little theater. I've been there before, I think. Yeah, yeah. lots. Of, Daniel Sloss was just there. Yeah. Reese Nicholson I saw who was on Drag Race. So it's cool, cool acts get to play there. So cool. I've, I, I know the, I've done the show downstairs. Yeah, yeah, and bet you have. Soho Playhouse, go, go, go. We're sponsor people. Finding the perfect suit is impossible. Finding a suit that's perfect for you is simple thanks to Indochino. Choose every detail on a suit, shirt, dinner jacket, and more. And for fully custom pieces, the affordable prices may surprise you. Okay. I love Indochino. And I love it from personal experience. You are you. You are wonderful. You are shaped differently than me. You want a suit especially to Fit you like a glove. You don't want it to be too baggy or too small. Your whole being is directly influenced by how that suit fits your body and how you feel when you look in the mirror. And if someone has a problem with me saying that, you are wrong. I We disagree. I do believe if it fits you well and it's got your initials on the inside and it fits every specification, you're going to walk around like a million bucks. And that's what I want for you. And I'm going to give you some money off of the purchase it's not going to cost you a million bucks to look like a million bucks that's got to be a saying that's good that's got to be something that someone's used before yeah you're gonna like the way you look that's good i guarantee it (laughs) i someone should use that line too Every suit is made uh, to your exact measurements and you can customize every detail. Create a suit that fits you. And it's like suit season. It's dress up season. Fall is the perfect time for the guy in your life, for the anybody in your life, they're going to love this. And I want you to make, you can go design your perfect suit with Indochino. So go, their website is actually very good. Go on their website, design one. Just do it. 
just see what it looks like. See what, play with it. Be your own, you know, fashionista. Your own, you know, and then you'll come to the end of the process, and then I'll give you some free money if you want to make it. Get fifty dollars fifty dollars off any purchase of three ninety nine or more by using promo code JTrain at Indochino.com. That's fifty dollars off a purchase of three ninety nine or more at i n d o c h i n o dot com promo code JTrain. Indochino.com, promo code JTRAIN. That's a deal, people. Love that. Here with Gabe Malika. The show is called Solo. It is at Soho Playhouse, November 2nd. Two-week run. Get your tickets. How slow is too slow? JTRAIN, I need your sage advice. I've been a guy on Hinge about a month ago, and we've talked every day since. We've gone on two dates. A coffee date that turned into watching a movie at my house, just cuddling. And then a second date, he brought me to dinner because I wasn't feeling well. And Oh, he brought me dinner because I wasn't feeling well, and we watched TV and ended up making out. Super sweet and innocent, right? We planned a third date, but it fell through. But we did run into each other at a soccer game, and he bought me a drink. That doesn't count. All right, running into each other... I have issues with this email. It's funny when they give you details that I have an issue with, and none of them are the two dates. Mm, yeah. Calling the third date, third, we planned a third date, third date falling through and then going, but he saw me at a soccer game and bought me a drink. Those are not equal things. Not a date. My question is, I'm happy it's developing slowly and we both stay in touch through text and Snapchat throughout the day. So we're both obviously still interested. Uh, but how long do I hang on waiting for him to schedule a third date? I've expressed to him that I think it's hot when a man makes a plan and that my love language is quality time, so I would really like to spend time with him in person. He hasn't listened to any of that shit. Moving slowly is great because I could see this lasting long term, but how slow is too slow? Sincerely waiting on an answer. Gabe Malika, what do you think? You know, just hearing that, what, what are things that pop out to you? A person who has just said things are going well and you've only been on two dates you know, so you obviously knew pretty quickly this is someone I want to invest my time into. This yeah. seems different. This seems different. I, the you seem she seems very sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody should take her on a really nice date. Right. It sounds to when when somebody says like I've told him that I like men that make these kind of moves or whatever. Men are stupid. Men don't mm-hmm. listen to anything. Mm-hmm. No. Even the good ones. Right. Like stuff goes right over our heads. I don't get the sense if you asked him like yeah what has she told you she likes he'll be like I don't know Game of Thrones like he <laughs> won't know. Oh, yeah, right. she did say that thing about men being independent. Like, he's, he's not picking up on that. Right. It sounds like it sound, either he needs prompting, because sometimes men right. like need to be told what to do. Hey, ask me on a third date, idiot. Yeah. This is stupid. Or he might just not be that into it, and he doesn't know how to express himself. This person is living, everything they say is right, but it's also wrong. Yes. So, I like, I, yes. I, like, when I hear, like, well, I told him I love language, he doesn't think that's you specific at all. No, no, no. He knows women like when a man plans a date. Yeah. yeah. He, th- and so the idea that that is something that you care about more than the next person. So let's stop with this. He doesn't know. He knows women like a planned date. Mm-hmm. Okay. He made two dates or he made two plans that went through. So yeah. he was good enough for two. Then the third falls through. And he's still texting you all day. Here's the thing. She is thinking of interest as an on-off switch when it's really a dimmer switch. Mm. This guy likes you. He likes interacting with you. He's a little bored. He's out there looking for a ghost of his own creation while he has one on the line. Mm. And that sounds very bad because it sounds like, oh, I'm a backup plan. No, some guys are just two in their own way and they don't think they'll ever lose you. So why would they do anything different? Yeah. I think you've, you've ne- you have to make yourself scarce. I think she is not. She has made herself a just a commodity that is everywhere. Instead of making herself, you, I believe in scarcity of yeah. your time, of your effort, and I think you have to say to him that you are a resource that could go away at some point. Mm. Because right now he comes to you for the dopamine of having someone to text who has said yes to him in a romantic way. Mm-hmm. That has a power over people that we don't really put enough thought into. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like if I, if I like, because when she's like, he texts throughout the week, but you've had two dates in a month. That to me was g- the only thing that mattered. Yeah, yeah. Why is he still texting you and not making a plan? Because yeah. it feels good to get a text from someone who romantically likes you. Yeah. Now, does he want to go on a third date? Well, that's going to come with a lot of responsibility because third date means I like you. Mm-hmm. It means it's sending a message that like I'm investing time in you, which maybe he doesn't want to send yet. Mm. Yeah. Like, 
No, I mean, I, I think those first two dates are kind of intimate, right? Like cuddling right. up, sometimes cuddling on the couch and like bringing someone food when they're sick. For me, that sometimes that's more intimate than hooking up with somebody. Right. Well, I, there was something, you know, it's it, sometimes a lot of men are writing checks they can't cash. Yeah. <laughs> you know? like, I want to be Prince Charming. I just don't have it in me for this person I barely know. And, and I've gone this far with them. We're texting every day with a month of someone I've seen in person two and a half times. Yeah, yeah. I saw them at a soccer game and felt obligated to buy a beer for it. You know, not like, a date. Barely. Not a date. We're going to round down. <laughs> Two dates. Two dates. <laughs> well, this is happening on The Bachelorette right now. I think it's, uh, or Bachelor in Paradise. I'm watching Bachelor in Paradise. There's a character on the show, uh, Michael A. I think he follows me on Instagram. And I like him as a person. He seems like, and he has this backstory where his wife had passed away. Yeah. And he has a child. And he keeps going on the dating show. And he's on the dating show. And he's every... It, everything in his life is so important because mm -hmm. the only thing to talk about is I have a wife that passed away. Yeah. Like that's a un, a story you wouldn't wish on anyone in the world and you have a kid who you, and the, and it's not like wife, pa I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to compare pass away stories, but yeah. the kid being there means you can't ignore everything in your life. There's the kid first and you're trying to have, you know, build it. And I'm making a lot of assumptions, but I don't think I'm wrong. Mm. I don't even know this person. I feel weird talking about them in this way because yeah. they're like, their story, but, and then you watch him on camera. He's talking to this woman, Sierra, uh -huh. and he's telling these stories to her and Sierra's like, I could be a mother. I could be with them. I could, I could, I could be that woman. Yeah. Of course she's thinking of things that way because he's telling these stories to her. Yeah. So, you know, then one of the guys on the beach, they were like, wow, Sierra's coming on a little strong. No, she isn't. She is... She's matching the energy. Matching the energy, and she's hearing this is what's important to him, and then going, well, could I? Which is totally normal and valid. Yeah. And then you see Michael A. have to end it with her, because, and they probably, I don't know what they've done physically, but I just know that they're, like, considered a couple. Yeah. And he goes, I, I gotta end it with her, because now I have to cash this check mm. that I've written. I've written the, I'm telling you important stories. I'm making you think about whether you could be a mother to my child. And then he's going, I got to end this. And he has a right to end it, yeah. but he also has to understand like, and he even says that he's like, I'm making people feel bad by while well, I'm getting through my own shit. Yeah. And I think this is a little bit of what's going on here. And his, this, and what's going on here is less tragic, less taken less seriously but this guy is doing the same thing with a different story that doesn't get as much empathy. Michael A gets an, a lot of empathy because, again, he went through a tragic death of his wife. This guy doesn't get empathy because he's trying to figure out his own shit yeah. while texting with you. Yep. And then you're like, I like you. And he's going, I think I've texted too much. Yeah, I've definitely been this guy. <laughs> Absolutely. I've because I Absol want to be guy who drops off hot food for you and we cuddle on the couch. Right. <laughs> and then when I actually think like, what do I actually want out of a relationship? It's not always those things. And that doesn't right. mean either of these people are, are bad people or um, like, I, again, the person who wrote this email deserves somebody who right. wants to go on that third date. Right, and, they, and, and they've shown the ability mm. of cuddle on a weeknight, bringing you food when you're sick. And you're yeah. like, this is great. I can understand. So what she needs to do, and it sucks that she has to do it because it's funny. What you just said is so right about so many guys. Then I start to think. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> we're good until we start yeah, thinking. Then we're th in trouble. Then we go, oh shit! I did do a lot of nice stuff for this person that I'm not really, to, you know, looking to date. Yeah. You know, and you go. So I think this is part of being scarce. So you go, hey, I'm gonna take a step back from texting. You have to text this person. Um, I'd like to go out with you. I think there's something here. I'm interested in you. I'm going to take a step back from texting. I, I think this is making me get ahead of where we are. Mm. If you're down for a third date, I'm down. Make a plan and I'm down. Make a plan and I'm down. Oh, that's a Great hot line, move. hot yeah. move. But you have to cut off the dopamine drip that you're giving to him. Totally. And I, it sucks that I'm like putting the responsibility on kind of the victim here. But that's, if you want, you either want to change things or you don't. Because he's a guy. He'll, he'll stay on this forever. Oh. He'll be married with kids and still text you and stay <laughs> right. on <Chad> you. Hey. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dinner was awesome tonight. The kids are all fun. Yeah. Yeah. They don't care. Yeah. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com here with Gabe Malika. The show, November 2nd. So we're coming up on it. Oh, yeah. We announced today. So it's a week away from air date. Or no, yeah. two weeks away from air date, right, Shelby, I think? 
two weeks from now. So get your tickets now. Oh yeah, you can get the tickets now. Oh Where yeah, do you go. Uh, my Instagram is great. If you DM me, I'll get you a promo code. How about Love that? It. At Gay Malika. We're sponsor people. Nutrafol. 30, 30 million. 30 million? 30 million women experience weakened or thinning hair. Thousands of women have taken control of their hair with Nutrafol, including my mom. My Hell mom yeah. at, get, is hooked on Nutrafol. I'm sending her every using the promo code. Um, she loves it. She feels a difference. She's one of the people that have experienced thickening uh, hair from it. She's she's a full on endorser of this product because I, I I don't I'm not a woman. I I don't identify that way. So I'm like, who can I send this to? And my mom was like, I want it. I love it. I need it. Reordering. She she's Ooh. back for more. So she's seeing. You know, the, the the win that Nutrafol offers. Nutrafol offers two targeted formulas for women that are clinically shown to improve hair growth and thickness with less shedding. It works by targeting the five root causes of thinning. Stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, and your metabolism. Never miss a dose by subscribing with automatic monthly deliveries. You may also notice less stress and better skin, nails, and libido. You're Ew. welcome, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> and dad <laughs> grow thicker healthier hair and support the show by going to Nutrafol.com and use promo code JTRAIN new customers get $15 off your first month subscription this is their best offer available anywhere and only available to US customers for a limited time plus get free shipping on every order so take $15 off Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com promo code JTRAIN stand up for your strands and get Nutrafol I love that my mom I'm, I'm like not just like this isn't like, you know, buy my fucking shit speak. <laughs> <laughs> my mom is like hounding me because I have to order. It for, I order it for I get, you know, whatever. Use so, the promo code. Of course. <laughs> We've got to use a promo code. Surprise stepmom. Ooh, okay. On the subject of Michael A. I mean, this is uh, in the... Jared, big fan of uh, you and all your podcasts. I want to get your opinion on this weird dating experience I had recently. Some background. I matched with a guy on Bumble. We chatted back and forth and agreed on dinner date. He's 41, has a 12-year-old son. I'm 29, have no children. I don't immediately see children as a deal breaker, but maybe I should now. Date goes great. We have good chemistry. He comes over to my apartment and the next day, uh, comes over to my apartment the next day. I don't like that. We have dinner the next day he comes over. Okay. I, I guess I like it, but it's like, you know. It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, and it's also like, you know, for every relationship, oh, we had this magical seven times in one week and then all of a sudden we're together forever. That's like the extreme. And people lean on the extreme because it's a successful outcome. Mm. And, and, and so we get pulled into, and I'm coming over tomorrow and you go, uh, let it breathe right let it breathe we hang out have a good time after that he had his son for a week and i was off to, uh to a vacation during that time so i guess we had a great date i have my son for a week the only time i can come over is tomorrow so makes it more understandable totally we talk about going on another date when i'm back he won't have his son then the night before i leave he asks if he could stop by after he leaves his office for the day to give me a kiss before i leave too much that's a, that's a yeah it's right? a one type of romance but it's it's such a it's surface level romance right I think there's a deeper it's a yeah it's not it my feels kinda, like he's trying to fuck yeah like before we leave yeah it feels like it's a gateway drug to what I really want is to fuck right and it's also you're leaving for a week I got my son for a week there's time for this to like have some room breathing room for me to like disappear forever I don't know I, I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just a little too convenient to go, well, I got to come over for that goodbye Good kiss. kiss. Like, what? Yeah, he's at the office all day. He's not <laughs> popping over for a kiss. No. I thought that was cute and agree. Oy! <laughs> 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 he shows up and we chat for about 10 minutes or so out of curiosity. I asked if he has to pick up his son after. I assumed he'd be at an after school program or at a relative slash friend's house. He says, no, he's waiting in the car. Oh, no. I. Oh, you got to be upfront about that. Right. And you know what's crazy about that? If you say, hey, I just wanted to give you a kiss. My kid's in the car. Let me give you a kiss real quick. Right. It's so, it's kind of sweet. Right. It's like, well, because fucking's off the table. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, because fucking's off the table. I'm not, there's no ill will intentions and I'm not making my child wait in the car. But then like the, that God, guys are dumb. We're so dumb. They chat, I mean, 10 minutes in, 
Like, imagine she started blowing him, and he's like, hey. <laughs> the car's off. Hey, yeah, hey, can you hurry up? My son gets a little antsy in there. Like, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's endangerment. Right. It, <laughs> the window's open a crack, but I think it's a little hot out there. You want to hurry up? <laughs> he's you with a dog. my balls. <laughs> I'll be at, like, what are you? <laughs> the cat's in the trunk. We really. <laughs> come on, hurry. If you, if you put your finger up my butt, I'll come in two seconds and then I can look at my son. <laughs> it's crazy. Which really weirded me out. He could tell my mood changed and said, it's all good. I told him I'm seeing a friend before she leaves. No. <sighs> Apparently his son, who is 12, by the way, then asked, dad, do you have a girlfriend? And he tells me he said, not a girlfriend, but something more than a friend. Oh. He's not really handling this all maturely. That guy I mean, needs friends. Yeah, that guy needs a buddy. <laughs> I'm so weirded out at this point. I make up an excuse to get him to leave. So, I mean, 10 minutes is a long time for a 12-year-old. Like, Yeah. I also felt really badly his son was just sitting there. I also don't live in the best part of town, so it makes me feel bad a child was sitting in the car and unattended. I'm not crazy. That's strange, right? Don't tell your child about me uh, when you when we've only hung out twice. <laughs> that's, that's not, not of all their issues. That's yes. one of the issues. Yes. yes. Uh, thanks for reading, uh, Jared, and would love to hear your take sign, not your stepmom. What do you think? I Oh, you. I think you read this perfect. She. This is not the right guy. No. For the, when you have a kid... And you're dating, and I'm just get I'm just turned thirty. I'm getting into that mode where like that could happen. I could, right, right. There, there's an onus on the person with the kids to kind of like be the adult, right? And like know how to handle. Like I have this kid, and like we're gonna do this very responsibly. But when this, this guy's a loose cannon, he's just like, well. It's on the. Uh, here's the thing: you can parent however you want, but the minute you show me your parenting, I'm gonna have a judgment whether I have kids or not. Totally, and. This is just showing you how he is as a person. Mm. It, you know, I feel for the kid because I wouldn't want to be the kid in the car wondering where the hell's dad is. That his girlfriend is it not his girlfriend? Yeah. But he is taking so little care with you. I actually think it shows that he's only there for casual. Yeah. Because he cares so little about how he brings this kid into your... Because he's like, ah, oh, he'll forget about her once I forget about her. Yeah. Like, to me, it's almost like he's... It shows me he's there for her just to fuck more than... Because I, if someone was like, I have a kid, and listen, you don't get that kid until I'm ready to show you that kid, I would go, okay, I got to earn... I got to see if I want to earn that kid. I got to see if I want to earn that responsibility i i don't know there's like i think you know this is not the same i'm not saying it's the same but your show yeah would you you know this person that you've been on two dates with how are you going to bring them into the show that's a and it's a thing that i've dated people casually before and i'm like hey this is like all my 20s are in this hour and she came and we had a we had a nice time afterwards, and then we like kind of broke up right after. I was like, "Hey, I wouldn't have brought you to meet all my friends and see my hour if I thought you were going to break up with me in a week." Like, right? It was kind of like that's an important <laughs> thing for you. My show is my kid, <laughs> but I and that's why I started with this is not the same as a kid, but but it's similar. It is similar in the way that like I've 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 created this thing. I'm molding this thing. I care about it deeply. Yeah, and if someone ca- and then like I have people. So like I went on a date, and the girl was like. I had a show after. She's like, well, should I come see the show? And I was like, listen, I, I, I'm not ready for that. Yeah. No, that's an intense. And, and, and I have in the past been like, come to the show and done that thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's never felt great. Mm. I've had to learn. I'd have to grow up with that. Yeah. You have to have a boundary. And, and this is a 40 year old year old man. Like to say that he's, and he has a 12 year old, he doesn't know how to integrate the kid in his life. I think he does. Mm. And if he doesn't at this point, that's a bigger issue. But I don't think he, I think he knows how to narrate a, I, I don't think he's so stupid. I think he knows how to bring a kid into the life of a woman yeah. or into his new life with a, I don't know how long he's been divorced or whatever it is, but I do think he knows more than he's putting on. He knows not to have his kid in the car while he gets blown in the house. Yeah, he didn't bring the kid with him. Clearly he wanted that separate so he knows there are certain things you shouldn't do right he knows enough not to bring him in but not enough to leave him in the car right so to me that means one thing he doesn't care that much about you and him yeah oh no 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 so it's like he's telling you exactly who he is yeah and as you know the great maya angelou said believe him 
Yeah, believe <laughs> it. Like you gotta believe them. Right? Honestly, this is a political scandal. If he were running for office and somebody was like, "Yeah, he like had his left his kid in the car," but we can't vote for this guy. Right. You would judge him. You would not. You would judge him. J Train Podcast at Gmail dot J Train Podcast at Gmail dot com. Here with Gabe Malika. Go follow right now. Old flings. Old fling slides into my DMs, but doesn't make a move. Mm. Jared and guess could really use your help a year ago my coworker, male 30 and I female 28 started hooking up it only happened twice and then the fling pretty much ended we've both since left the company and text occasionally haven't seen him in person since the fling ended I recently posted a photo on Instagram where I clearly look good the old fling slid into my DMs and said damn thirst trap lol to which I replied guess it's working winky face and all he replied was lol shrugging emoji <laughs> okay I just gave the message a like and the response and the conversation ended. Why would he slide into my DMs and mention a thirst trap and then not want to continue the conversation? Was he just window shopping? If so, why even message me at all? Or was he turned off by my aggressive response? Or was my response too vague for him to interpret? He, was he actually intrigued by the photo and in his first attempt uh, and his attempt to flirt back failed? Or was he simply being nice? Thanks for your insight. Thirsty thirst trapper. What do you think? That's a great question, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like you're like the DM guy. Am I? Oh, yeah, you have a little reputation. This Jared. is my rep? <laughs> um, I, for me, if I'm in the DMs, like, LOL thirst trap, like, there's interest. Like, I'm not messing well, around. Do you think this guy is just like a player who just, like, wants the attention? I love the idea that she's like, uh, was he intrigued by the photo and his attempt to flirt back failed? He in no way thinks he failed. Oh, There's no failure in this. Yeah. He didn't ask you out. All he said is, I like your picture, and you answered, which means good thing. Yeah. That means you're responsive that and you were flirty, winky face. So he knows he still has you when convenient. Yes. And to me, he saw the picture, you know, sadly, I I see eye to eye with this. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I hope I'm not known as the DM guy. No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> but I, I mean. do understand this feeling as a guy where it's like it's almost ejaculatory. Like, I know, I don't that know if like. that's a word, but it's like the like is like him just like, you know, you responding was in a way getting him off mentally because it's like, oh, she's winky face. That means she's still cool with me. Yeah. That means she would. And now it's like the ping pong ball has been hit back to you and you go, oh, I got to hit it back. I got to like do something. And what he did was nothing. And, and he, mm. because the minute he had to do something that was getting out of his house and leaving and using money and time and effort was the minute he backed off and he goes, ah, maybe I'll come back to this another time. Yeah, he wanted the approval. And I think right. we all want, we, it's funny, women, I'm like, oh yeah, they'll post a nice picture, they get 200 likes, it feels great. For the dude, it's like, hey, you look nice. She's like, oh, thanks. And he's like, that's his 200 likes. Right. That's his no, thirst trap. You're so right. That, that is it. Yeah. Because he's just getting the, if she had written back, hey, we're done, please stop messaging me. Different, he, mortified, mortified, yeah. horrible. This is yeah. not what I wanted from this. No. Her winky face, uh, guess it's working winky face. Guess it's working winky face means you, the, the trap has gotten the thing yeah. that yeah. I wanted. Yeah, you gave it to him. And then you give it back by telling him winky face you liked it. Not you scarce. Know? Not scarce. There it is. Not That's the a, little the, like or, oh, thanks. No. Guess it's working winky faces in that language is as strong as you can kind of get. Right. I think we learned during COVID, at least I did, that like, <laughs> this feels so bad to say, but like there's kind of like this like, there's like a list of women. I'm like, oh yeah, we've kind of like had a thing, maybe texting or whatever. And like during COVID, you kind of like, I slid into a bunch of DMs. Like, you go as, back to the list. You go back no, to the, the list. The people that have approved my naked body before. Yeah. And it's a sacred they, list. There, it's a sacred list, and it also it's a place to go pick up the dopamine. It's a place to go pick up the good feeling. It's a place to go pick up the confidence. Totally. This guy, and so she says, we hooked up twice, and it fizzled. You've already said it wasn't a ghost; it was a fizzle. That mm. means you are seeing this in the way he wants it to be seen. Yeah. No harm, no foul. No, he didn't traumatize me. He didn't make me. He didn't ghost me. He fizzled. We just didn't work out. Now mm -hmm. he's back and he knows he can come back to Fizzletown mm. because you're okay with that. You, so I, I think, you know, the reason he doesn't make a plan, he doesn't want to. Does he, is he interested in you? Yeah, he thinks you're physically attractive. Yeah. Is he interested in starting a life together? I wouldn't think that. Doesn't sound like the type of guy. Though, also, she probably has more power in this situation than she might oh, realize. Because two weeks from now... The famous you up, or even just like the, hey, what's going on? Like, like 
two weeks later, that's going to pay dividends in the later rounds. I think she has total control. Well, she can. She has to decide. Here's, uh, she's what trying she to decide. She's trying to decide what she wants based on what he wants. Mm. And that's not going to do well for you because what he wants is to fuck. Yes. And, it, and attention and when attention. that's not immediately available. Right. So, right. And he, but I want to fuck could be seen as he likes me. Mm. I, I, I think that can be both can be true. I think he might like you after fucking. I don't know. Yeah. But the mo the biggest letdown of this is him, you guys fucking, and then him going, well, I guess I'll see you next time you post a thirst trap. Yeah. yeah. And that's not what you, you have to, I don't know what you want. You have to decide what you want. Because that's what that, she has to list. When you decide what you want, you now have created the standard. Mm. Because, you know, her biggest problem is like, she's looking for her standard through him. Yeah. And he's an idiot. He's an idiot. And he's, we he's are all him. Yeah, no, I, we he's are me. him. No, I, I, that's why we can explain it so well. Yeah. You know, yeah. like I, I do understand everything he's doing. I understand everything she's thinking. I'm understanding why, whoa, where's the date? There's no date. Yeah. And the truth <laughs> is he hasn't thought about this really at all. He was no. just like, it was all it. He's just like, boop, boop, boop. Oh, you and look good. She needs, so here's the move. The move is, what do I want? Oh, I want to go on a date. Okay. Then the move is telling this guy, you know, Next time he DMs, not being as flirty and more directive, mm. you know, like I guess it's working wonky face. If you do want a date from someone who's going to respond, look at the thirst trap, you have to let them know that. And then you have to unsubscribe from them. Ooh. I think like if you, right now he has a, you, you have a window where the curtains are drawn or are open yeah. and he can look right in. Yeah. So he gets to look at your life and go, eh, yeah, I'll get involved now, or oh, I don't want to get involved. Mm -hmm. It goes back to scarcity. Yeah. You know, and what she's thinking is like, well, if I unsubscribe on Instagram, if we stop following each other, then how will he get in touch with me? He has your number. If he thought so strongly of you, it wouldn't just be produced by a picture that you post. Totally. Jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Here with Gabe Malika. Everyone go check out the show. It's called Solo. It's at the Soho Playhouse. Wonderful show. Getting good reviews. Invested into real dollars, people. Go, go, go. Gay Malika on Instagram. He's going to give you a promo code if you DM him. Also, what a great night in New York City. It's in a cool part of town. You can get dinner. It's all good for your Carrie Bradshaw moment. It's a good sex story. <laughs> it's a good sex story? There, there is a good sex story in it, yeah. Really? Yeah, I, I got caught... Uh, hooking up in the school library at four in the morning. I'll leave it at that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Look at intrigue. Uh, can you shut the fuck up about my weight? Papa JT, feather, feather. Long story short, I've always had to worry about my weight and I'm not a naturally small girl, but I've always stayed very active and dieted to keep a certain physique, which I've been happy with. At the start of the pandemic, I started nursing school with the combination of Jim's clothing, being in a stressful program and starting a new antidepressant. Anti -de antidepressant, am I saying that right? Yeah. With weight gain being a side effect, I put on 40 pounds in two years, which fucking sucks when you're 5'2". Clearly, it's something I notice. I'm not dumb, but my mom and my best friend always bring it up. They're always telling me that something is wrong. I need to get blood tests done. Ugh. I've since changed my medication. I tell them I'm working on it, but it's a constant thing, and it makes me never want to leave the house. I am sorry. Mm. Even when I do, my friend, who is very small, will always ask me what I'm wearing, and will be like, oh, God, please don't do your usual big T-shirt and biker shorts. Hey, what a, this is not really a friend. It's um, tough. Like, hmm, well, I'm not going to wear fucking jeans and a bra because I'd hear about my parents even more so. What do you want from me? So my question is, what the fuck do I do? There's been so many times where I'm like, Jesus, does my appearance affect you guys this much? I'm still the same person. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. This sucks. This sucks. I feel for this person. Same. Um, because it's, it's so many things to take care of at once. Yeah. You know, it's not just... A pound, it's 40 pounds yeah. that they feel like they have to, to, you know, to make. And it's these people that are overbearing. I understand where they're coming from completely. I've been in the same boat. I, 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 and I think the, it's when I bring up the 40 pounds because she's bringing it up. Yeah. She's bringing up 40 pounds. So it's like, it's not, a, it's not, I'll lose 10 pounds and I'll feel good about it. Mm. it's I'll lose 10 pounds and I'm 30 away. Yeah. And, and if I lose 10 pounds, that's not even good enough for the people that are giving me shit. Yeah. When the people giving, him sh giving her shit 
they don't know the number. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. so it's like if you look better than, la- you know, because weight loss is such a long process. Yeah. So, and, and that's even if you want to lose weight at all. Maybe she doesn't want to. Maybe she's happy. Yeah. I don't know. But if you're looking to lose weight, you know, f- I need to fit into a large is different than, man, it's been a good week. Mm. And that's the more healthy way to go is where it's, in my opinion, I don't know what's healthy or not. I'm not a doctor. I don't fucking know shit. Yeah. But the more healthy way, in my opinion, is to go, good week. Yeah. Let's get next week. You know what I mean? Little victories. Do you have any thoughts? Oh, absolutely. I mean, Jared, I think you're all over this. I mean, as somebody that struggled with my weight on and off, um, aff- affecting my confidence in mm-hmm. different ways, one thing I don't love is when thin people have like advice for me or like people that Ay. don't struggle with their body in the way that I do. Right. Where you like, don't, you don't you have don't the know. problem you can't understand. Yeah. And that's frustrating. And then to harp on it, for right. me, that's just like, Oh, you need to create some distance between them about this topic. That doesn't mean they're not good people. They, it's probably coming from a place of we want you to be happy. We think this is the easiest solution, even though it might probably won't be. It's pro. And the other thing is, they're pro. And what the annoying thing that people do, it gets me so annoyed. They make it about your health. Mm, oh yeah. And here's the thing: if my friend gained forty pounds in two years, you would go, "Are they s- upset about something?" Totally. How are they feeling? mentally and i'm sure that's a part of what they're thinking Mm -hmm. but it's also a thing that you can't even say like you know you can't go you can't it is very difficult to go you have to look someone in the eye and go i've noticed the weight gain so it's made me wonder if you are unhappy yeah because it becomes a seven thousand times more serious thing than you even want to get into or that they have even put it you don't maybe they're just like i'm gonna gain some weight you know it could be as small as that but yeah you know, I know that I, you know, I don't know. It's it's hard. I, I think, may, you know, I would have, to, I guess I would go to my mom and my friend and be like, I'm avoiding you because of how you guys act around my weight. Yeah. It's not helpful. Right. And it's the lack of directness that probably is a bigger part of this issue. Like, they're making side comments. Why don't you wear this? Will you wear that? What? Is, and it's like, and then you get upset, like almost like death by a thousand paper cuts because you're yeah. going... Oh, they mentioned the bike shorts and the big T-shirt, and now I'm doing the thing where I'm rela- like, they're probably going, "Don't wear a big, you know, get dressed up with me. I'm getting dressed up." Yeah. And then you take it as, "Oh, you're telling me what to wear. It's because you think I'm not, you know, mm-hmm. happy, and you don't think I'm. I don't know. I'm. I'm ranting Sometimes those point. people don't know the impact that their like slight little th- thought, thoughtless right. thing had on somebody, mm-hmm. and they don't realize that it's death by a thousand paper cups. They don't realize that they've cut you at all. Right. And it's in the totality of something. Maybe three weeks they've said a couple of things, and that really hurts. Right. But they can't. It's they didn't have a sit down uh, conversation with you about. I would go to. Your habits. I would go to each of them on their. I, I would send a text. Mm. Text is like kind of like the easy way to go, and yeah, it's it gets the information out, gets it out, and I would just text them, "Hey, um, I'm avoiding you right now." Just plain and simple. I'm avoiding you right now. Yeah. You've made comments about my weight to the point where it makes it hard for me to like see you mm-hmm. because I'm not sure where I'm going to take this mentally. Your your comments that might not even be about my weight end up being about it because you've made yourself heard so much yeah. on my body. Mm-hmm. And if we're gonna hang out again, I got it. I need you to admit that this is you, you've been doing you know saying these things that make me feel you have to see this before we can come back together and be normal yes yes no i think i think honesty is the best policy i think doing it separately is a good idea um because we got to first stop like that kind of bleeding right Right. we need to solve this issue then in terms of like it's sometimes it's nice to commiserate with somebody else in your life who has said to you in passing oh i'm struggling with my weight in some way like find somebody there there are so many people that you will be able to talk to (laughs) there's others yeah Yeah. and maybe when you talk to these people like maybe usually when people have that kind of advice for people i find it's like oh you're struggling with your weight even though i didn't even think about it right right usually internal for them and they are taking it out on you yeah or you find something else about them you don't like and you say, and you hey, I, I've noticed that your hair sucks, you know, like, or I've noticed that you, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like just find the one thing. Obviously, I'm joking. Yeah, I just give say, it back. I, I, yeah, I, this is, a, that's a tough one. I don't it's know. It's a really tough one. She sounds uh, great. J Train Podcast at Gmail.com. We got one more. Is that cool? I love it. These are great. These are great. Even this one is, this is. The first sentence is like the craziest. There's a detail that's the craziest thing that's ever been written. In this email. The one that's coming up. Wow. The craziest thing that's ever been written. In this, in the, in email. 
in, in, in English. <laughs> okay, in email. Okay, so so this is the email title. Am I a bitch for not wanting to date a guy because he has a micro penis? Okay. 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 J train and guest, feather feather. I'm a 25 year old female living in a mid sized southern city, and two summers ago I dated a guy the same age that I met on Hinge. I am not originally from the South, but he is from a small southern town. One thing I have learned from living here is that southern dating stereotypes are true and relationships can move extremely fast. We met in May 2020, so right when things were opening up post COVID. I had that was it? <laughs> we hadn't even started yet. <laughs> oh, May 2020 is when it... <laughs> the micro penis thing, that's normal. But, but, but the world but the... opened up. <laughs> I guess I didn't put it together. I'm like, yeah, it closed in March 2020. I was doing some math. Mid March, yeah. then April, and then things really started to open up May 2020. <laughs> That's when so they were like funny. southern southern cliches are true. Well, that one is another southern cliche that's pretty true. <laughs> we opened up a month later. We were good. COVID yeah, remember COVID? Over. Those four weeks were crazy. <laughs> <laughs> month was insane. In the south, they're like on dog years. Right. A, a month in the south is two years in the northeast. <laughs> we met in May 2020, so right when things opened up post COVID. Wow. <laughs> I mean, we didn't even live in the same reality as them at that point. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I get the sense that we're in a totally different reality. That's part. like, yeah, totally different realities. Yeah. That's like me and the guy with the micro penis. <laughs> Boom. Very nice. <laughs> Everyone who listens knows I'm a strong medium. Okay. <laughs> Make I that two. <laughs> two a couple of strong meads. <laughs> I had not lived here very long at that point, did not have a lot of friends, and him and I really hit it off and got along really well. We spent a lot of time together very fast, and I was young and naive and got feelings very quickly. Due to various reasons, we waited several weeks to do anything past making out, which is not something I usually wait to do, but he also did not seem to press to have te- seem he did not seem pressed to have sex. This makes some sense. Of course. Um, when we finally did, we already had the exclusive talk. This makes some sense as well. Um, and then I realized that he was absolutely horrible in bed and has a micro penis. Oy, I feel for the micro penis community. Yeah, it's got to be tough. It's one of those things that even as I say, I feel for the micro penis. It sounds like I'm like doth protest too much. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. And it's, but that's what makes this conversation so difficult. Totally. Like because you go, this person is dealing with, in my opinion, um, a disability. Absolutely. Like, like, and they're not treated as which they can't talk about it openly. Like, yeah, it's just so maybe they can. I don't know. I would feel uncomfortable. Like there's a whole there's so many layers. And totally. again, the idea that he's like not pressed to have sex. Let's get exclusive. Now we have sex. And then the big reveal. This makes some sense. Yeah. Right. What I, you- I think that. I think this person's probably learning how to date with a micro penis. I imagine that's very difficult. I've never had right. to do it. And it's one strategy. It's like, oh, we have this emotional connection. And then later you reveal your red flags, like any red flag. For right. his happens to be Physical. a micro penis. It could, for some, for other people, it's an STD. It could be right. a thing that, like, oh, I'm not eager to get into bed. Because we are so weird about our penises. So weird. We are so, there's a commercial, Snoop Dogg is the brand representative for a dick pill. Incredible. I think it was like, what was Snoop Dogg part of? It was one of those companies, it was like, it was something for erections. Mm -hmm. Erectile dysfunction. Yeah. Snoop Dogg does a commercial for erectile dysfunction. And in the commercial, he goes, if you're dealing with erectile dysfunction, I don't. (laughs) He... But if you're dealing with it, and he's and a spokesman, he's getting paid. He couldn't just do the ad. Yeah, he yeah. had to. He, he probably read it. He's like, "Well, how will people know that I don't deal with this?" Yeah, Snoop, yeah. you're in your sixties. Like yeah, you're fine. an older man. Like I can understand that you're not getting fucking erect like you used to. Like yeah. <laughs> the idea that you have erectile dysfunction issues is not even a surprise. A surprise to me. Me, I'm 37. I can't get it up sometimes. It, it, it it's is fine. There is a, like the, the idea that Snoop wasn't Snoop. A hundred millionaire. Yes. Who's also getting paid to do this ad couldn't just let this go. Yeah. Couldn't be questioned. Had to get out in front of it. And as a company, 
find somebody who's willing to embrace your product. You're paying a lot yeah. of money. It's like it's like you own this company, ironically. Right. Just like say, find yeah, who some, would need that? Yeah. But here you go. Yeah, and you're paying him so much money. Right. Find somebody else who's like, yeah, I take dick pills. They're sweet. Have Stav do it. Right. Someone that needs Anyone. it, that loves it, that goes, this is amazing. Yeah. I, I. How old do I think Snoop is? I thought he was maybe 57. How old is he? 63. He's 50? Wow. Snoop is 50? I thought he was older. He must have started when he was young. <laughs> young. And also, I think because he's so omnipresent. Like, yeah. he's in so many commercials. He's in the Corona commercial. He's in the Dick commercials. He's singing. He's acting. Yeah. It feels like he's been everywhere for so long that he's, he must be 80 years old. Yeah. Well, maybe it's because he did that ad probably in his 40s. And he's like, I don't need that. I don't need yeah. Maybe it's for you, but it ain't for me. Yeah. I was, I'll never forget that commercial. Because I was like, that's how weird we are about penis. This yeah. is a guy who's successful, smart, crushed an industry, has been, is a multi-industry talent, yeah. who can't just let people do with the... He didn't have to say he had it. Yeah. He just had to not mention that he didn't have it. Yeah, yeah. It's wild. Yeah, em- embrace, your, embrace that stuff. But Nobody that's how, it. I mean, and that's Snoop Dogg. That's not 25-year-old dude during mm. a pandemic. I'm 25-year-old living in a midsize dating a new woman like of course he's gonna feel like shit yeah due to various reasons okay so when we finally did we were already had the exclusive talk and then i realized that he uh he was absolutely horrible in bed and has a micro penis i'm usually a very sexual person so i try so I tried to talk to him about it and he said he had no problems with our sex life yeah well, he has no problems because he's having sex so, i have a question go do we think it's micro penis the medical term or it's just small this is where it gets frustrating this is where this conversation gets weird because yeah. if you google micro penis it's like you tiny. it is a micro fucking penis there's yeah. no there is no distinct you know you you would know a small penis from a micro penis yes if you've googled it and yes. and which i have because <laughs> I, 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 i'm not snoop i can admit it i can google micro, micro penis. Micro penis. <laughs> that's right when we find uh, i am usually very sexual he, and he broke it off about a month later and I was honestly okay with it because I really needed to have some good sex. She's being a little bit dismissive of how big of an issue this is by saying that. Mm. I, and I, I, that's where I'm coming back to her a little bit. Fast forward now-ish and over the last six to eight months, he has tried to make a comeback in my life. He has told me several reasons about how he knows he made a mistake and has made efforts to see me even though he's moved out of our town. I have seen him a few times and I've vo- always avoided sex, but this weekend I was drunk and... Uh, he was in town visiting family and we had sex and it was honestly worse than I remember. He told me he knows he wants to be with me and even drunkenly asked me when we could get married and I always say it's because we want different things long term. But honestly, if he was better in bed, I would probably find a way to make it work. Can I tell him the honest truth or that his micropenis is just not enough for me or do I keep making other excuses? I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Oof. That's a tough one. It's not tough to answer her question. No. <laughs> because the the answer is no, you should not say I'm not with you because of your micro penis. I don't think that's yeah, no, worth it's, saying. It sounds like sexual compatibility more than like size necessarily. Right. And compatibility is also awareness. Like if he if he mm. went, listen, I got a problem downstairs and I know that you guys would negotiate through this maybe and figure it out. But he is not ready to do that yet. Mm-mm. He's a twenty five year old kid in a small he doesn't know. He doesn't know. And do you have any other thoughts? I, I um, yes, I, I think like people with disabilities, whatever it is, penis disabilities, whatever, have sex all the time. It's right. like, I work with kids who are now adults right. that go on dates and stuff like that. This is a thing I know a little bit about. And there's famously this guy, Shane Burkaw. You should look him up. He's, okay. he's a cerebral palsy in a wheelchair and he has an able-bodied wife who if you okay. saw at a bar, you might chat up. Right. She's like conventionally very beautiful. And he's this guy who's in a wheelchair and they have this relationship. They go on speaking tours. They talk about oh, their wow. sex life. They talk about... It requires open communication. It doesn't require, yeah, we got drunk, we had bad sex, blah, 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 blah. That's right. two people on two different journeys where it's like for them to make that work, they have to talk. Right. And and, and that's the thing she doesn't want to do. No. Because the way she's writing this email, it's like, it's your penis's problem where I'd be with you. She has her own problems. Yes. And, and this is something I'm, because I, what I like about this is I'm speaking to the emailer. I can't, to the guy, I, my advice to him would be like, you know, obvious to the, if the guy wrote this in hey i have a micro it's a different conversation yes the, that, but he's obviously or he doesn't care 
Mm. And we're putting a lot of that, our own shit on him because he's going, sex is great. I'm yeah. fine. And I, I guess his problem, I would be like, if he was like, well, my girlfriend wants to leave me because uh, our sex isn't great, I would go, have you talked to her about what she wants in the bedroom? Like, mm. my, t my talk to him would be different. My talk to her is you're keeping in touch with someone that you know you don't want to date and then go going out with them when they come back into town, of course they're going to say they think they have a chance with you. Yeah. Clearly. And then you had sex with them because you, because you're going. Well, they're a nice guy. They're not your match. Mm, you know, and, and it seems that she is a little lonely in her own right. Mm -hmm. She is seeing. Oh, there's someone that likes me. That's approaching me. That's coming to me. Who you've already decided is a no. Yeah. And you're letting them back in your life, and then going. Oh, well, the sex is bad, so I don't want to. And then you're going. But they are a good person. No, the match isn't there. And yeah. she's blaming. The, she's saying it's like when someone's like, "Well, we would be together except for distance." No. It's you're not the match and they're not trying to be your match. Yeah. You know, well, we, we'd be together if it wasn't for his micropenis. No. You'd be together if you guys connected on a level that you could communicate through this and you can't and you don't want to. Yeah. It's over. You need to cut off communication and end it and just say, hey, I'm sorry we're not the match. And for my own personal benefit and to get over this relationship, I need to cut off communication with you. You Done. need to write the textbook. You're ready to go. You're, this is that, great. Because I, got so, I get so annoyed with... With her making it all his problem. It yeah. is some his problem. He's yeah. not aware. He's not thinking of you sexually and whether you're getting off. That is annoying in bed, to be in bed with someone like that. Who's going, it's fine. Yeah. But then she's saying, you know, he's, you know, he tries to come back in my life, told me several reasons about how he knows he made a mistake. Like, you're listening to this thing going, oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And then going, well, I got nothing else, so I'll just, like, hang with him. And if he says marriage drunkenly, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're, we're, I don't even want you guys to have a third date. You guys right. want to like, you guys, <laughs> right. he's talking marriage. You guys are not in the right same place. Right. And, it, and here's the thing. I always give this thing. And people are like, people ask, how do I have the talk with my significant other? I want to find out if we can be boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah. And I'm always promoting the reveal. The reveal being go to this person that you're dating and say, I've deleted the dating apps and I like you and I want to see what this could become because yeah. now you're saying here's what page in the book I am and then what you're doing is you're putting the responsibility of the person across from you to see that you're on page 56 and they have to go oh my god what page am I on yeah that's what it makes them do an asshole in that scenario goes well I'm on page two and they're on 56 but I guess I'll just stick around mm. and the law and listen I have stuck around knowing someone's on a bigger, on a later page than me. Yeah. And I was a dick for it. Of course. And the longer you wait to let them know what page you're on, the more of a dick you're being. To me, this guy has told you he is looking, he's on a different page than you. And you're letting it go on and on and blaming a micro penis for why you're on a different page. Yeah, that's mine. I love the way you use that phrase. I want to. I've deleted the apps. I want to see what this could become because mm -hmm. it's less like I'm ready right now for this big thing. It's like, oh, right now we could be this other thing that we both could find out together. That's right. a very like we're doing this together as opposed to like, hey, I'm already looking at page 110. You're like, I right. don't know where this ends, but why don't you come with me? That's that's hot. That's right, great. right. And, and instead of like, well, you're agreeing you're telling me you'll be my girlfriend boyfriend mm -hmm. in that scenario there's like a power dynamic where you're like oh fuck i gotta i gotta catch up i gotta catch up or i i i railed i lured them in mm -hmm. <laughs> you know it's my fault when i end it I yeah don't know. yeah yeah gabe thank you for coming on dude thanks for having me this is a great pod thank you i think it really helps people i'm trying you know in a real world way um i hope that it helps i think your show is going to help people People if anything, like they're it, gonna man. they're gonna come away from the show being like, "Wow!" But also, great night in New York City. This is a, this is a Hell perfect yeah. night. Gay Malika. It's called Solo. It's at the Soho Playhouse starting on November second. Go to his Instagram. It's got all the information at Gay Malika. I'm Jared Fried. We're here every Monday with your emails. Keep sending them in. JTrainPodcast at gmail.com. We'll be back next episode. Boom. <laughs>